I'm bored. I want to be entertained. Can my pharaoh find some way to entertain his queen? And what is it you're going to do?
when I was um, selected to cover the Michael Jackson trial, and I did that for Fox News. I went there with the full belief that Michael Jackson was guilty, that he had been a child molester, that this was yet another example, and that I was going to find the dirt. Interestingly enough, having you know arrived in San Maria with 2,400 other journalists, I was lucky enough to have a seat in the courtroom. Being in the courtroom with Michael every day, I felt like, gee, he doesn't feel to me like there's anything evil or twisted about him. Jay Leno testified basically that the accuser seemed to be shady, that he didn't seem genuine, and he was looking for handouts. Larry King testified that these people are out for money. The trial was ludicrous. And the idea that Snedden had such a vendetta, again, in my opinion, that he would charge Michael Jackson with the abduction and conspiracy charges in addition to molestation and alcohol and, and you know plying the kids with alcohol and all of these other charges, which amounted to 14 counts against Jackson, was proof positive for me later that Snedden was out for any kind of blood he could get. If anything could stick, there were a series of accusers, five in all, most of whom have been discredited completely, one of whom was Jordy Chandler, who had a settlement of a large sum, about $20 million. Because of that settlement, out of that came a suspicion and a, a veil of guilt that the public imposed on Jackson. This whole trial against Michael Jackson and calling him a criminal was, in my opinion, a vendetta that was brought about because the prosecutor, Tom Snedden, he was unable to bring criminal charges against Jackson when the Chandler incident was reported. And now he had another family of accusers. And even though their background was that they had falsely accused others of sexual molestation, that they had targeted celebrities for money, and even though the accuser was a cancer patient who Michael Jackson helped recover from cancer, Snedden decided. In covering Michael Jackson, it allowed me to figure out something about the media. If you're looking for something, you can find it, even if it's not there. The media wanted him convicted in the court of public opinion. The media wanted to see him go to prison. The media had a lot at stake. And they take a position, and you don't realize they're taking a position. And that was the case with Michael Jackson. Had Michael Jackson gone to prison, there would have been a cottage industry in covering suicide watches, family visits, fan visits, you know, prison guards. You could just start to think about all of the hoopla that could have been made on a daily basis about whether Michael Jackson was wearing pajamas or he wasn't or somebody slipped him something or he, got, he was in the hospital now or he was on drugs and Janet went to see him. And the, I mean, it could go on forever. The trial was ludicrous and the fact that the media wouldn't let up and that the public never saw the truth was something that I couldn't live with. So I started a process of writing a book, started a proposal, made a few phone calls around to agents and publishers that I know. And this is what I was told. I was told, oh, a positive book about Michael Jackson? No, we don't want it. You want to write a pro-Jackson book? No, we're not doing it. Somebody had to come clean. The trial was over, and nobody cared anymore. Nobody cared. I decided, you know what? Let me go to the courthouse and look at the evidence myself. And so I, I was able to photograph all the evidence. I was able to look at the evidence, hold it, hold the Neverland Valley Ranch guest book and see how Gavin Arvizo and his brother defaced it. I start looking and I now look at the police tapes of the Santa Barbara police with the accuser. And I watched it. I watched it again and I rewound it. I watched it about four times. Every time I watched that tape, I would see the police saying to this boy, 
it's okay. You can tell, tell us what Michael did to you. You can tell us, it's okay. It'll be all right. You tell us what he did to you. He's done this before, we know. They were feeding him lines and the kid is sitting there, uh-huh, uh-huh, and I don't really know. And It was so mind-boggling. I wish people could see this tape. Those police were leading that kid, almost like a script. This was a trial that in essence was a life and death situation for Michael Jackson, something from which he may never have recovered. And in fact, let's face it, he didn't recover because while he was in this very attempt at a comeback, it killed him. Apparently at his autopsy, it was revealed that Jackson's body was also plagued with bed sores, which allegedly came from the months and months he spent in bed. Money. If you think about it yourself, and Michael molested your son, would you ask for money? Would you? Now the plot to destroy Michael Jackson. There have been many disgusting statements made recently concerning allegations of improper conduct on my part. These statements about me are totally false. Michael Jackson will not face charges of child sexual abuse because the boy at the center of allegations against him has refused to testify. are constantly trying to bring Michael Jackson down for all the wrong reasons. everyone's been saying for the last 12 years Michael should have been tried Michael should, he's been tried Jordan Chandler you're a liar 
Jason Francia, you're a liar. Gavin Arviso, you are a disgusting liar. <laughs> No, you wouldn't ask. If Michael molested your child, you wouldn't ask for money. But you would do, the first thing a man would do is beat the heck out of him and then call the cops. in coming out and giving a statement. He's scheduled to make... Here we go. Here we go, Jane. This is the audio feed from the court. Superior Court of the State of California for the County of Santa Barbara, Santa Maria Division, the people of the State of California Plaintiff versus Michael Joe Jackson Defendant, case number 1133603, count one verdict. We, the jury in the above entitled case, find the defendant not guilty of conspiracy as charged in count one of the indictment. Dated June 13th, 2005, four person number 80. Count two, verdict. We, the jury in the above entitled case, find the defendant not guilty of a lewd act upon a minor child as charged in count two of the indictment. Dated June 13th, 2005, four person number 80. Count three, verdict. We, the jury in the above entitled case, find the defendant not guilty of a lewd act upon a minor child as charged in count three of the indictment. Dated June 13th, 2005, four person number 80. Count four, verdict. We, the jury in the above entitled case, find the defendant not guilty of lewd act upon a minor child as charged in count four of the indictment. Dated June 10th, 2005, four person number 80. Count five, verdict. We, the jury in the above entitled case, find the defendant not guilty of a lewd act upon a minor child as charged in count five of the indictment. Dated June 10th, 2005, four person number 80. Count six, verdict. We, the jury in the above entitled case, find the defendant not guilty of attempting to commit a lewd act upon a minor child as charged in count six of the indictment. Dated June 13th, 2005, four person number 80. There are only count the seven, counts verdict. now remaining We, the jury in the above entitled the case, Did find the defendant not guilty of administering an intoxicating agent to assist in the commission of a felony as charged in count seven of the indictment. Dated June 13th, 2005, four person number 80. Count seven verdict, lesser offense. We, the jury in the above entitled case, find the defendant not guilty of providing alcoholic beverages to persons under the age of 21, a lesser included offense of that charge in count seven of the indictment. Dated June 13th, 2005, four person number 80. Count eight verdict. We, the jury in the above entitled case, find the defendant not guilty of administering an intoxicating agent to assist in the commission of a felony as charged in count eight of the indictment. Dated June 13th, 2005, four person number 80. Count eight verdict, lesser offense. We, the jury in the above entitled case, find the defendant not guilty of providing alcoholic beverages to persons under the age of 21 a lesser included offense that charged in count eight of the indictment. Dated June 13th, 2005, four person number 80. Count nine verdict. We the jury in the above entitled case find the defendant not guilty of administering an intoxicating agent to assist in the commission of a felony as charged in count nine of the indictment. Dated June 10th, 2005, four person number 80. Count nine verdict, lesser offense. We, the jury in the above entitled case, find the defendant not guilty of providing alcoholic beverages to persons under the age of 21, 
a lesser included offense of that charge in count nine of the indictment, dated June 10th, 2005, for person number 80. Count 10, verdict. We, the jury in the above entitled case, find the defendant not guilty of administering an intoxicating agent to assist in the commission of a felony as charged in count 10 of the indictment, dated June 10th, 2005, for person number 80. Count 10, verdict, lesser offense. We, the jury in the above entitled case, find the defendant not guilty of providing alcoholic beverages to persons under the age of 21, a lesser included offense of that charge in count 10 of the indictment, dated June 10th, 2005, for person number 80. That completes the reading of the verdicts. I'm now going to go off the air. And with that, the audio feed from the court is cut. Michael Jackson is a free man. He is acquitted on every count. Jane Secker. This is the end of the nightmare for Michael Jackson. There have been rumours surrounding his relationship with young boys for the last 10 years. Throughout it all, he has protested his innocence. His fans have protested his innocence. He is going to walk away from this court vindicated, as he always said he would. This must have been the most hideous ordeal for Michael Jackson over the last four months, over the last two years since these allegations began. But he's been vindicated of all charges in this court. The jurors have taken seven days to find him not guilty of all ten charges, as well as the ten lesser charges of giving alcohol to a minor. As you said, this came down to whose word this jury believed. Did they believe the word of Michael Jackson? Did they believe the words of Gavin Arviso? It appears that they believed the words of Michael Jackson, even though the singer never took the witness stand. Yes, yes, very much so. And they, the, again... The, the cheers rang out amongst the supporters as they listened on their portable radios. As each verdict came out, they cheered louder and louder. First of all, the conspiracy to commit child abduction and false imprisonment and extortion. Not guilty, said the court. The crowd cheered loud and long in the street outside. The serious charges of child molestation. Four counts in all, and an attempted molestation count was read out in the court. Michael Jackson acquitted on all of them. The offence of administrating alcohol to a minor with an intent to commit a felony, in this case child molestation. The clerk, the clerk of the court, Laura Fry, moved on to repeat the words, we the jury find Michael Jackson not guilty. And even the lesser offence of a misdemeanour, which the judge had clarified they could choose to charge Michael Jackson with and judge on his behaviour, they found him not guilty. It's a clean sheet. Michael Jackson is a free man, and once the legal niceties have been dealt with inside the court, we would expect him to emerge from this building to thank his fans, to thank his family, to thank those lawyers led by Thomas Mesereau who have brought this conclusion after seven days and nearly 33 hours of deliberation. We await anything moving inside the court, we got that shot of the door when Judge Melville has finished his summing up, his administrative tasks with the court. We see those pictures and we do expect that our colleague Ian Doverston, who's been in court for that momentous decision, will be allowed to leave very soon and we'll be able to hear what he has to say of a description of the moment inside the court. I can see one of the SUVs being brought up, reversed into position inside the court compound. Jane Sacker's just feet away from that. Jane, it appears they're going to make a speedy exit in the cars Michael Jackson arrived in not half an hour ago. Well, they have brought those SUVs up. We know that, that Michael Jackson is scheduled to make a statement after this verdict. I can tell you some of the information that we're getting from the court is that Michael Jackson was seen to be wiping his face with his hands with a tissue inside the court. There has been a little bit of movement. One or two security guards have come out of that court, but there is lockdown in that courtroom at the moment. This has been such an ordeal for him. 
and for his family who've been here every single day throughout this trial. Uh, the SUVs have pulled up, um, but I wonder if that's just so that if he chooses to make a, a quick getaway, he can do. I think he's going to be keen to milk this for all it's worth. He's going to want to show the world that he's innocent, that he's been cleared of all of these charges, but he's a very frail man. He's been through an enormous amount in the last four months. You think he may just also want a bit of private time. He may want a bit of quiet time with his family. Uh, they're all inside the court. All right, what we have to cover it, so let's ask about it. What's the relationship that you had with Michael Jackson? Uh, had or have? I mean, it's kind had of, both. you know, whatever. No, uh, let's go with had to Listen, have. You know, no, he's just, he's a good friend of mine, and he still is. I mean, everything that's going on, I mean, it's unfortunate. It's an unfortunate situation for, for everyone involved, and, you know. How did you first get to meet him? Uh, I first met him, he kind of called me randomly, like out of the blue. You're just kind of like, hi. It's Michael. I'm just like, hey. And the thing this is, this is after Home Alone. This is after Home Alone. I actually had met him before I was doing a Nutcracker at Lincoln Center. I was playing Fritz, and he came oh, backstage one day, and I, I actually met him very briefly. And he kind of recognized me because it was after I'd done Uncle Buck, and so he kind of mentioned something. And then he calls me up, kind of out of the blue, and it's kind of just this weird, random thing. And he was like, "Why don't you come over to my house?" And the thing is, I didn't react to him the way most people did. Most people were like Michael Jackson, and you know, I mean, he was a god to people. And to me, he was, you know, I knew he was a pop singer, but beyond on that you know I didn't I wasn't one of the fans I think that's one of the reasons why we connected was the fact that you know I believe me I call him a jerk all the time I call him a fat head and this and that you and know your and brother he gets knew him it. too yeah yeah no we all did I mean he was you know a family friend well, what happened at the house that's what all these things it's, are you know that's, are that's what's about. so weird you know what did happen? nothing happened you know nothing. I mean nothing really I mean we played video games you know we we you know played Sleep it as a amusement bed. park well the thing is the thing is with that whole thing is that you know they go oh, you slept in the same bedroom as him it's like I don't think you understand Michael Jackson's bedroom is two stories <laughs> and it has like like three bathrooms and this and that so when I slept in his bedroom yeah but you have to understand the whole scenario and the thing is with Michael is that he's not very good at explaining himself and he never really has been because he's not a very social person I mean he's you're talking about someone who's been sheltered and sheltering himself also for the last like 30 years or you know and so he's not very good at communicating to people and not very good at conveying what he's actually trying to say to you and so when he says something like that you know people you know he doesn't quite understand why people react the way that they do why do you think he likes young people so it's because it, it's the same reason why he liked me was the fact that I didn't care who he was that was the thing I talked to him like he was a normal human being and that's what and, and kids do that to him because he's not I mean he's Michael Jackson the pop singer but he's not the god of you know the king of pop or anything like that he's just you know a guy who's actually very kid like himself and wants to go out there and wants to play video games with you Did your parents like encourage that. it um I, they weren't against it you know it wasn't like they encouraged it or like pushing me upon it it was just kind of like i wanted to hang out with him and they were fine with it so what do you make of what he's going through now like I, you know like i said it's unfortunate and you know it's it's a circus right now you think it's a bad rap uh, you know, I think so, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, listen, like, look what happened on the first time, the first time this happened to him. You know, if someone had done something like that to my kid, I would, you know, I wouldn't just settle for some money. You know, I'd make sure the guy was in jail, you know, and I, it just really sh goes to show, I mean, as soon as, you know, they got the money and they ran, I mean, that's really what happened the first time. And so, you know, I don't know, it's just, it's a little crazy, and I kind of have taken a step back from the whole thing, because it is a bit of a circus, and... You know, if the same thing was happening to me, I wouldn't want to drag him into it, and vice versa. So I try my best to keep a distance from it, but like if I said, he's still a friend of mine. If they you a character witness, would you appear? Um, I guess so, but I don't, I, I'd probably not. I mean, like I said, it's crazy, and I don't really want to be a part of it, you know? Do you like him? I like him, and he's a friend of mine. I'm not saying I wouldn't do mm. something like that. It just hasn't been brought up to, you know, brought up to me, and I don't think he'd want me to either, just because, like I said, you know, if the same thing was happening to me. I wouldn't want him what to be reaction has happened to you from all of this what do you mean I mean people how do people people inquire of you a lot about it uh, sometimes you... yeah I mean pe you know people always have like their opinions and they always you know it's funny I mean people always talk to me about him because you know I'm one of these people who will tell you anything about my life really mm -hmm. to get me going you know and so yeah I mean I freely and openly talk mm -hmm. about him and stuff like that but overall you know he's just a good friend of mine Would you wish him well yes of course mm -hmm. I do what got you in